from the bottom of my heart. I speak for myself and I speak for millions, particularly from the South and the Middle Belt, that we are deeply sorry about what we did, what we did to you. It doesn't atone for what happened. But know this, there are some that do feel bad, not some, many. And you know the funny thing? Exactly what was being done to the Igbos or what was done to the Igbos at that time is now being done to many of our Middle Belt brothers yeah. and the very same people today. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I say, fear God despite the provocation. We must ensure that our cause is pure before God because it is God that can fight this one and we must be courageous and strong. Every man and woman that was made by God has the right to aspire, to determine his own future, to pray to God and fight for a better country, better life for himself and his family. It's not a crime. And every man has the right to say, I've had enough. I've had enough. If I'm the wife, which is what Lord Lugard described the South, when they created the amalgamation of, the, of North and South, uh, Northern, and, Northern and Southern Protectors in 1914, he described the South as the, as the rich wife. And he described the North as the poor husband. And he said, we shall unite them, marry them, and may that union live forever. You call me the rich wife. And the, the poor husband comes, he rapes me over and over mm -hmm. and over again, takes my mineral resources from the Niger Delta, burns my homes in the Niger Delta, pollutes my rivers, mm -hmm. and takes everything to them in the north. That's the rich wife. You go to the east, you kill them, and slaughter them over the years, simply because they said, we don't want you to kill us anymore in the core north. Mm. You kill them. That is the plight of the rich wife. Mm. You come to the southwest, you instigate one political party against the other until there's a crisis, and then you move federal forces in and suppress everybody and kill everybody. Oh, we suffered too. Yes. Oh, we yeah. did. Yes. The whole western region crisis was manipulated from the north. Mm -hmm. You don't know, know that today. That is what caused it. And we killed each other. And we're still killing each other because we're being manipulated. This has to stop. But thank God for this because I won't leave you without telling you that you have so much to appreciate God for despite everything. Your plight is not as bad as the people of the Middle Belt. Let me repeat that. Your plight is not as bad as that of the Middle Belt. They have completely been decimated. They have lost their identity. They have lost mainly their faith. They have lost their strength. They speak a foreign language, which is not their to just Hausa. They dress like the Hausa man. They have lost their cultural heritage. They don't even know who they are anymore. The Hausas don't even know that they had a history before the Fulani came. And of course, the one that suffers the most is the Northern Christian. Everything was taken from them. That it's so hard for them to rise up now and lift up their heads, though many are trying. But the Igbo, despite what you have been through, you have refused to bow your heads in shame. Yes. That is why the whole IPOP dream, the resurrection of that aspiration, has come to fore, especially since Buhari came to power. There is nothing that is happening today that Nambi Kanu did not prophesy and predict yes. in 2020. Yes. It's, happening. it's happening before our very eyes. And since then, many of your people have been killed. As a human being and as a Nigerian, and as a man that believes that justice is a fundamental prerequisite to peace, I implore President Buhari and the federal government of Nigeria to please enter dialogue, dialogue with IPOP and the people of the East. And if anybody tells him that IPOP is not the heartbeat of Eastern Nigeria today, that person is a liar. IPOP is the strength of the East. Yes. Yes. Without the IPOP agitation, mm. the cry for restructuring from all our elders, every single one of them, would not, would not be so loud today. And even that, they have rejected it. So what are we talking about? I urge the federal government, release Nambi Kanu, 
enter dialogue with IPOP. Stop calling them terrorists yes. because they're not. they're not. And let peace reign in the land. I urge IPOP to look to this country and say, we can fight for our aspirations in a peaceful way as you have been doing, but that we will never allow ourselves to be destroyed, to be intimidated, or to be broken. And I say to the family of Namdi Kanu, keep the faith. His brother has been so strong. Keep the faith. His sister, who's sitting right here, has been an inspiration. I say keep the faith. Because what your brother is going through, many others in history have been through it. It happened to so many in the history of Europe, so many in the history of America, so many in the history of the world have paid a price for the freedom of their people. We are all ready to pay that price. I've come to the conclusion. I am ready to any day, any time. Any day, any time. I am ready to pay that price. He's paying that price. And we've all paid a price. But we will not leave our father's land. We will not leave our father's land. We will not leave our father's land and our burial sites and our homes and our churches and our place of rest. We will not leave those places. Yes. Yes. Worshipping cows, I want to graze their cows and take our land and rape our women. Yes. Yes. And take all that is ours and crush our faith. We will never accept that. Yes. Yes. I will not let me say this. I commend your cause and each and every one of you. And indeed the people, the great and proud people of the Igbo nation, in Igbo, I commend you into the hands of the living God. I decree and I declare that each and every one of you that has suffered, the Lord will soothe your pain and heal your wounds. The Lord will vindicate you. And the Lord will give you life. God will give you strength. No matter what they throw at you, you shall stand. God bless you. God be with you. Once again, thank you.